Thanks for joining us for our daily reflection on the scriptures offered us by the church in the lectionary for the days of Eastertide. And as you know, each of the 50 days, our scripture reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles. So we've been following the journey of the good news. So today is uh, Tuesday the 19th of May, Tuesday in the sixth week of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, we've prayed each day of Easter Eastertide for the gift of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, and his gifts to the Apostles were what empowered their mission and their spreading of the good news. So empower us similarly with that same Spirit, we pray. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, we've been following a fairly rapid journey that Paul has been taking. And uh, we finished up yesterday, Monday, uh, with one of those wee passages again. It's in the first person, we did this, we did that, we did the next thing. And um, we, they got to um, to Philippi and they met Lydia, uh, that powerful woman uh, who is a true believer, as she says. And they, uh, they, they uh, accept from her her generous hospitality. So... Um, Paul and Barnabas have a bit of a, a fallout, you can read about that in the second chapter of the book of Galatians. It's about uh, how Jewish you have to be in order to be a Christian uh, and how we, how they live that reality. So uh, uh, Luke uh, doesn't, he kind of pastes over the cracks, he's, remember he's very ironic um, in his uh, dealings with the, the disagreements in the early church and portrays things in a more harmonious and calm way. Uh, than Paul does certainly in the letter to the Galatians, he's much more direct about it. Uh, well, anyway, the, 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 the sum and substance of it is that uh, Barnabas is no longer accompanying Paul in this part of his journey. Um, as we'll hear, um, it's as usual eventful. So, from the Acts of the Apostles. So, a crowd of Philippians joined in then and showed its hostility to Paul and to Silas, so that the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be flogged. They were given many lashes and then thrown into prison, and the jailer was told to keep a close watch on them. So following his instructions, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Late that night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing God's praises while the other prisoners listened. Suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the prison to its foundations. All the doors flew open and the chains fell from all the prisoners. When the jailer woke and saw the doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to commit suicide, presuming the prisoners had all escaped. But Paul shouted at the top of his voice, Don't do yourself any harm, we're all here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in. He threw himself, trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas, and escorted them out, saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They told him, Become a believer in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household too. Then they preached the word of the Lord to him and to all his family. Late as it was, he took them to wash their wounds and was baptised then and there with all his household. Afterwards he took them home, gave them a meal, and the whole family celebrated their confession to belief in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Paul in Philippi, no longer with Barnabas, but with Silas, another companion for his journey, it's interesting that uh, there's always at least two of them. Um, you'll remember that in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus sent the 72 disciples out in pairs. Um, I just wonder if there's something about not trying to do it alone uh, that's lurking in there. Um, we, we do need companionship for our journey. Um, we do need uh, the support and encouragement of others. Um, we don't go it alone. And that's always been a particularity of the Catholic tradition, is that we as a community offer prayer. It's not a, a vertical relationship uh, individually each person has with God, so much as a, 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 a vertical and a horizontal relationship um, with the other members of the community. And together uh, we support and encourage each other, so that uh, when I am weak I can depend on someone else's strength, and when I am strong someone who is weaker can depend on me. So it's always been about uh, being together um, in our endeavour to embrace the salvation one for us. So there um, 
is a bit of hostility again shown to Paul. Now we've seen that both acceptance, so we had, uh, we had uh, Lydia, and rejection. So um, the balance of, of both um, are to be found in each of these episodes. Um, and well, surprise, surprise, they are flogged and put in jail, just <laughs> just as Jesus was, just as Peter and John were. Um, and then, miraculously, um, they, they are freed. Actually, the, the, the jailer frees them, which is quite interesting. That's slightly different from Peter's experience, um, where um, they were they were led out of the prison by the angel of the Lord, we're told. Here, um, it's the jailer that frees them. And then, of course, as we're supposed to notice, they free the, they free the jailer. They, they bring him into the community of the saved uh, by baptism together with all his household when he's, uh, he's offering them hospitality. Um, to kind of make up for the shoddy treatment they've received and uh, and washes their wounds uh, inflicted by the, the flogging that they received. So um, I said to you that was a lot of imitation that Paul, um, I would uh, imitate Peter who imitates Jesus and it, it's almost slavish in a way but um, it's a very direct line and of course uh, Luke's point is that uh, the servant is not greater than his master. Uh, and again, it's re-emphasising that uh, those who are bearers of the good news don't just tell the story. Uh, they, 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 they live the life. So um, they don't just talk the talk, as they say, but they walk the walk as well. So uh, remember where the invitation takes us. We don't only say and do the things that Jesus said and did, but we have said about us and done to us the things that were said about and done to Jesus. Um, and indeed the continuity of Jesus to Peter to Paul um, and you can dot 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 uh, it continues to the present age so um, we have to expect uh, on our journey together um, to uh, to encounter both ups and downs both challenges and affirmations um, it's it's about a, a reality um, of life it's not um, it's not that we're cocooned from reality because we are bearers of the good news, so that we bring the good news to the reality that everyone experiences um, and experiences together um, and at the moment that experience is a, is a very challenging one. So, but uh, it's it's with the good news that we, that we bear the challenge. So let's end with our prayer to St Rock, remembering in, of course in the month of May the intercession of Mary the Mother of Jesus and bearing in mind that We've begun each day praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The church in a formal way um, redoubles its efforts in that regard for the Novena, the nine days from Ascension Day to um, Pentecost Sunday, Ascension Day being this Thursday. O blessed St. Rock, patron of those afflicted by plague, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and prayers and obtain for us all the health we seek. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Rock, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and soul. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you for uh, joining us today for our, our moment's reflection on the Holy Scriptures. I hope you together with your family, your friends, your neighbours are well. Um, and I hope you've got time to look out for them as well as looking after yourself. Um, please remember in prayer those who suffer, particularly those who are unwell at this time. And of course those who care for them and, and our other key workers who are so necessary, as, as we discover day after day, so necessary for the running of, of, of our society um, and the functioning um, of us all, um, each with our own part to play in the common good. Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.